The best treatment strategy for a patellar tendinopathy is still unclear. In 2015, these authors released a four-stage process to give something better than the eccentric protocol. The problem is this has never been put to the test, the four-stage process versus the traditional eccentric protocol. So in 2020, they did this study looking at it over 24 weeks. Some of the criteria for the people that they recruited in this study, they were 18 to 35 years old, some were recreational, some were athletes. They had a history of localized patellar tendon pain. They had pain associated with training and competition. They performed sport at least three times per week. They had tenderness on palpation of the patellar tendon. And on imaging, they had structural tendon changes on ultrasound, or they had increased vascularity on Doppler. Their Visa P questionnaire for patellar tendon pain had to be less than 80 out of 100. There was a total of 76 people in this study. Half of them did the four-stage process. Half of them did the eccentric training protocol. It went on for 24 weeks. We're going to talk about what this did for pain, what this did for function, what this did for return to sport. So let's look at a photo to compare the two. If you look on the right here, this is the four-stage process. This is what we're going to cover first. It is the stage one isometric, stage two isotonic, stage three energy storage, stage four sport specific, and return to play. If you look at it another way, you get diagnosed. You do stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, then you return to sport. You have to spend a minute minimum of one week in each of those stages and progression is going to be based on this loading test you do this every single day when this is a three out of ten pain or less the athlete can progress and if the exercises have been a three out of ten pain or less for an entire week the athlete can progress so they're using this pain scale three out of ten or less on exercises for an entire week and three out of ten pain or less on the pain provocation test means the athlete can progress stages in stage one, it's just isometrics. They were all done five sets for 45 seconds, single leg. The preferred exercise was a leg extension. They didn't put a photo in for some reason. It was at 60 degrees. The other option was a leg press at 60 degrees single leg. And the third option, if they didn't have those, was a wall sit at 90 degrees. The athlete would just pick one of those exercises and do them daily. In stage two, isotonics, these were done every second day. They were four sets of 15 in 10 to 60 degrees of knee flexion. They would progress the weight from a 15 rep to a 6 rep, and they would progress down to 90 degrees of knee flexion as tolerated. The exercises were leg press, leg extension. If those two were not available, they would do a walking lunge or a step up. Those were done every other day, and the isometrics were done on the day that you were not doing these. So progression from here was 3 out of 10 pain on these exercises, propagation test 3 out of 10 or less, but also they want strength to be similar in both legs. In stage three, energy storage and release, these were done every third day. They were three sets of 10. They were jumping and running exercises. First, they would progress the jumping to land on one leg instead of two legs. They would progress the running from doing interval runs to zigzag runs. Then they would increase the loading by just jumping higher and running faster. And then they would increase the volume by going to six sets of 10 over time instead of three sets of 10. This was done every third day, so on the day after this, it was isometrics. The day after that, it was isotonics, and then you would just repeat the cycle over and over. And an athlete could leave this phase when the exercises are a 3 out of 10 or less for an entire week of pain, and the provocation test is a 3 out of 10 or less. Stage four, very simple. This is sport-specific stuff. That start out individual with no pain, then get into group training, start with low intensity, low volume. And when an athlete can do three full group training sessions and there is a three out of 10 pain or less on the provocation test, they can return to play. So we just covered everything on the right, the four-stage process. What did the other athletes do? They did the, the side on the left. They did the eccentric training protocol. This was a little different, a lot easier to explain. They got diagnosed, they did stage one, they did stage two, they could return to play. What it was, was twice daily decline squat. And pain was interesting because you wanted to get to a five out of 10 pain minimum, and you wanted to push past that with the exercise. So the sets needed to be a five out of 10 pain or more. And if they weren't, an athlete had to add load. So if we see what this looks like, stage one, this is the single leg decline squat. An athlete goes down with one leg to around 90 degrees and they stand up with two. It needs to be a five out of 10 pain. And if it's not, they need to add load. As they get stronger, they also add load. The progression from this is a bit less clear, but they say you can leave stage one when you've done these exercises for an entire three weeks conscientiously and that you have a three out of 10 pain or less with external weight on the exercise for over one week. Stage two is the same as what we had in stage four in the last phase. It's just these sport specific exercises, the slow progression back into those. 
During the study, both groups also did these exercises to target uh, other risk factors. These were stretching exercises. These were glute band exercises for the glutes, for the hip external rotators, and something like glute bridge. They did these three times per week. It was the same between each group. They also did calf strengthening exercises, seated calf, standing calf. So after 24 weeks, was four-stage process better than eccentric training? They found a trend towards a higher return to sport, 43% versus 27%. They found that the exercises were significantly less painful, a two versus a four on the VAS, and that the percentage of patients with an excellent satisfaction was higher, 38% versus 10%. But the problem is the findings were not statistically significant for return to sport and for minimum clinically important difference. The problem with this study might be that it was unsupervised. It was self-reported. The adherence was also very low. It was 40% in the four-stage process and 49% in the eccentric training protocol. So this study does not give direct evidence. It only shows trends that the four-stage process is better. Could it be better if they used just athletes? Maybe. Could it be better if they had someone actually overseeing the exercise intervention? Maybe. Uh, we just don't know. There are only trends to show us that the four-stage process might be better. So if you're going to choose between the two, you should probably do the four-stage process.